How's it going, you sexy beast? Today, we've been given the newest update to Planicide 2, entitled Game Update Number 9. This is a massive content patch to Planicide, adding in the fabled lattice system to the continent of Indar, and will eventually be moved to Esmir and Amorish as well, and to Hassan once it's released. We are finally given a brief tutorial to help out new players to the game. There's tons of facility changes, and max units finally have their Empire-specific abilities. There's tons to cover, and just like my previous patch coverage, I'll be linking the patch notes in the description below for you to follow along. Go ahead, sit back and relax, grab a snack, and let's dive into game update number 9. First and foremost is the largest change that I'm sure we can all appreciate, the Lattice Link map system for Endar. This is the return to the Planetside 1 map layout to the further concentrate the fighting across continents and create lanes of combat as opposed to fights being spread out wherever the hell they please. The previous adjacency influence will no longer be in the main direction of facility captures. Now, each facility is connected by a link that will chain to a few other facilities creating a flow of combat. This new system is designed to help players be directed to the next offensive objective or to know where to fall back to defend. Any facilities that cannot be captured will be connected with a faction colored link and any facility that can be contested will be connected with an opposing faction's facility through a yellow chain link. With the change to how facilities are captured, many unnecessary outposts have been removed and many have also been added. Such examples of removed outposts are Mesa Com Station or the Leopard Wood Nursery. With these outposts being removed, we've been given quite a few more outposts to help sustain each large facility. Now every tech plant, amp station, or bio lab will have three surrounding outposts associated with the facility to help both attackers and defenders move around the base or to sustain a spawn point. With the change of Endar's facility capture mechanics, roads have been streamlined to follow the lattice links and to make it rather easy to traverse to each outpost. With the changes to roads, most outposts have been strengthened in their layout to make it more difficult for vehicles to impact infantry combat in such a large way. Facilities have had their SEU shield generators removed, so now there is no way to manually overload them. In order for the shields to fall around the SEU, the facility will need to be 75% captured, then the shields will automatically fall, revealing the SEU. This change is designed to give defenders ample time to arrive at a facility without their spawns being removed without any form of resistance. Finally, generators cannot be overloaded without proper territory adjacency to the outpost or facility in question. So, no more ghost caps or people sabotaging a defenseless position. If you're an avid max user, then the latest additions will be a welcome to your arsenal. All three factions max units have been given faction specific abilities to further enhance both their combat proficiencies of the max as well as further separating how they operate between each faction. The Terran Republic max has been given the anchor mode or lockdown mode and acts just like the same anchor mode for the prowler. When anchored, the max will gain an additional 15 to 50% bonus fire rate projectile speed, and reload speed, depending on what level the certification is, and these bonuses also vary depending on the weapon type equipped. The new conglomerate max has been given the Aegis Shield, which, when activated, will display a large blue shield on the front of the max, which will absorb damage from the front while active. The shield acts just like the Heavy Assault's Nanite Mesh Generator, where the shield depletes energy as damage is taken. The differing factor between the Aegis and the Nanite Mesh Generator is the Aegis only blocks damage from the front and does not drain energy while active. Each level of certification will increase both shield strength and recharge rate by 20% up to 100%. The final max ability we've been given is the Vonder Sovereignty's Zealot Overdrive. While this ability is active, the max will deal additional damage, move faster, and have its armor reduced. Each additional level certified for the Zealot Overdrive will only increase the damage bonus. Armor reduction and move speed are the same amounts across all certification levels, so it's generally a good idea to go ahead and max that out if you plan to use it quite frequently. Infantry changes are pretty small this patch, just focusing more on grenade types. With that being said, the Concussion Grenade will now only affect targets within the detonation's line of sight as opposed to going through walls. Both Concussion and Flash Grenades will have their durations varied depending on how far a target was from the detonation. 
maximum duration at the center of impact to a less severe duration while further away. Flash grenades will now remove a player's heads-up display if they are caught too close to the flash grenade's detonation. Medic's default medical applicator will now revive allies at 50% health as opposed to the previous 20%. The certification line has been adjusted for this change and will still revive players at 100% health at rank 6. Spotting bonuses have been doubled, giving 20 XP per normal spot and 30 XP for a squad spotting. Some visual adjustments have been geared toward the Terran Republic iron sights and scopes to help give the same peripheral view and zoom consistency of other weapons and other factions weapons as well. There's not a lot of vehicle changes this patch save for some secondary weapon tuning. Biggest change is the Saron HRB for the VS gaining a Kona Fire Bloom, increased fire rate, and a larger magazine size. This will give it a much faster time to kill at shorter ranges, but keep it pinpoint accurate at longer range fights. The Enforcer weapons have had their model changed to look like new conglomerate weaponry, and the Vulcan and Marauder weapons have had their models changed to look like Terran Republic weaponry. The Harasser wheels have been given collision volumes to prevent the wheels from getting stuck in walls or in the terrain, and to prevent the Harasser from fitting through small doors. The Flash has been weighted and tuned to act like the Harasser in terms of handling, so we should now be driving a proper ATV instead of a large clunky piece of metal. The map and user interface have been given a ton of lovin'. With the Endar lattice change, opening the map might just make your face explode. Luckily for you, you've got me to help you out. First of all, we've been given some additional filters to help sort out what the hell's going on with the map. The newest filters we're given are the Influence Cloud and the ability to toggle resource locations, resource flow through the lattice system, as well as toggling any combination of enemy and ally activity and territory control. Rolling your mouse over regions will now highlight the region's boundaries, as opposed to highlighting the entire region as it did before. The minimap can have waypoints placed on it instead of opening the map and placing a waypoint there. While the minimap is expanded, the compass will be displayed on top of it now. Minimap assets such as objective labels, spawn terminals, friendly squad markers, and the player arrow icon have had their glow reduced and layer decreased, meaning, meaning enemy positions and vehicles will take preference on the minimap, giving you an increase in readability when you need it the most. If you're confused about where you are on Endar, then make sure to check the map. Warp gates have been rotated with TR at the north warp gate, NC at the southeast, and VS at the southwest. A hotkey has been added for instant actions. Default bound to the home key, pressing it will put a timer and a destination on the screen for you. This is awesome so you both know where you're going and aren't limited to having the map open while deploying on an instant action. When receiving a whisper, a sound will play to let you know that someone is whispering you in your ear. Finally, warp gate spawns no longer have a cooldown. This will make vehicle column creation much easier or to readjust your offensive line. Also, the ultra quality has been added to the graphics menus for textures and overall quality. Still, if you want the most picture perfect looking game, I'd suggest dabbing around in the game's config files to get a higher graphical fidelity than the in-game menus allow. A few other unclassified changes would be the merging of the Helio server to the Connery server. This is just like the previous server merges. Outfits, friends, and characters on Helios will be unaffected, except they'll find them on the Connery server. A new sensitivity has been added for aiming down the sights and scope sensitivities for 3.4 times scopes and higher. If you're feeling unaccustomed to the new sensitivity, adjust the slider to your general sensitivity to get the same sensitivity you had used before the patch. Main battle tanks now also have access to the Luma fiber trim that the Harasser and air vehicles have. And finally, we've been given a tutorial for new players to figure out what's going on in the world of Planetside 2. When creating a character, you can opt in or out of the tutorial by checking the box at the character customization screen. If you want to check out the tutorial on an existing character, you can do so by pressing escape, going to the bottom left of your screen, and hitting support. From there, there's a go to tutorial button that will suit your needs. Within the tutorial, players will be introduced to the menus, movement, gravity pads, control points, shields, equipment, and terminals, recognizing friend from enemy, spotting, combat, classes, teleporters, spawns, and redeployment, warp gates, and instant action. If you're interested in running the tutorial for yourself, I strongly urge you to hop in game and try it out. Otherwise, I'll run it through for you. This is obviously for extremely new players who have possibly never picked up a first person shooter before. The concepts taught within the tutorial are about as bare, 
bone, and basic as one can get, but are the essentials that the game is built upon. This is an awesome step in the right direction, as the level of entry and skill bar required will be lowered just a little bit. Hopefully in the future this can be labeled an introductory tutorial and possibly have multiple difficulties which scale and what objectives are presented to the player before they're given a chance to step into a live fire scenario. Some things I would like to see would be an outdoor vehicle training and mastering of Empire specific fighters. Or even have a rather large shooting range to help teach the player about bullet drop and how it's compensated. The tutorial is very rough currently but is awesome nonetheless. So there you have it, you sexy beast. Game update number nine for Planet Side 2. How are you guys liking the changes to Endar's Battle Flu? Personally, I love it for the fact that it adds a clear view of what to do next, instead of capturing a base and everyone just scrambling to nearby outposts to capture. This will also help players figure out where a fight is due to the lattice links being a source of conflict. I can't wait to see how this will work on Esamir, since Amorish already is kind of built up for the same way. So how are you guys liking the changes? Let me know in the comment section below, or just say that TR Maxes are still the best of the three. Did you guys enjoy this video, or this patch's coverage as well? If you did, please give it a big ass thumbs up. Want to see more videos like this? Then go ahead and subscribe. It's free.